Section 7 of History of a Six Weeks Tour. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. History of a Six Weeks Tour by Percy Bysshe Shelley and Mary Shelley. Letters. Written during a residence of three months in the environs of Geneva in the summer of the year eighteen sixteen letter one hotel de chacheron geneva may seventeenth eighteen sixteen we arrived at paris on the eighth of this month and were detained two days for the purpose of obtaining the various signatures necessary to our passports the french government having become much more circumspect since the escape of la valette we had no letters of introduction or any friend in that city and were therefore confined to our hotel where we were obliged to hire apartments for the week although when we first arrived we expected to be detained one night only for in paris there are no houses where you can be accommodated with apartments by the day the manners of the french are interesting although less attractive at least to englishmen than before the last invasion of the allies the discontent and sullenness of their minds perpetually betrays itself nor is it wonderful that they should regard the subjects of a government which fills their country with hostile garrisons and sustains a detested dynasty on the throne with an acrimony and indignation of which that government alone is the proper object this feeling is honourable to the french and encouraging to all those of every nation in europe who have a fellow feeling with the oppressed and who cherish an unconquerable hope that the cause of liberty must at length prevail our route after paris as far as troyes lay through the same uninteresting tract of country which we had traversed on foot nearly two years before but on quitting troyes we left the road leading to neufchatel to follow that which was to conduct us to geneva we entered dijon on the third evening after our departure from paris and passing through dole arrived at poligny this town is built at the foot of jura which rises abruptly from a plain of vast extent the rocks of the mountain overhang the houses some difficulty in procuring horses detained us here until the evening closed in when we proceeded by the light of a stormy moon to champagnol a little village situated in the depth of the mountains the road was serpentine and exceedingly steep and was overhung on one side by half distinguished precipices whilst the other was a gulf filled by the darkness of the driving clouds the dashing of the invisible mountain streams announced to us that we had quitted the plains of france as we slowly ascended amidst a violent storm of wind and rain to champagnol where we arrived at twelve o'clock the fourth night after our departure from paris the next morning we proceeded still ascending among the ravines and valleys of the mountain the scenery perpetually grows more wonderful and sublime pine forests of impenetrable thickness and untrodden nay inaccessible expanse spread on every side sometimes the dark woods descending follow the route into the valleys the distorted trees struggling with knotted roots between the most barren clefts sometimes the road winds high into the regions of frost and then the forests become scattered and the branches of the trees are loaded with snow and half of the enormous pines themselves buried in the wavy drifts the spring as the inhabitants informed us was unusually late and indeed the cold was excessive as we ascended the mountains the same clouds which rained on us in the valleys poured forth large flakes of snow thick and fast the sun occasionally shone through these showers and illuminated the magnificent ravines of the mountains whose gigantic pines were some laden with snow some wreathed round by the lines of scattered and lingering vapour others darting their dark spires into the sunny sky brilliantly clear and azure as the evening advanced and we ascended higher the snow which we had beheld whitening the overhanging rocks now encroached upon our road and it snowed fast as we entered the village of les Rousses, where we were threatened by the apparent necessity of passing the night in a bad inn and dirty beds 
for from that place there are two roads to geneva one by nyon in the swiss territory where the mountain route is shorter and comparatively easy at that time of the year when the road is for several leagues covered with snow of an enormous depth the other road lay through gex and was too circuitous and dangerous to be attempted at so late an hour in the day our passport however was for gex and we were told that we could not change its destination but all these police laws so severe in themselves are to be softened by bribery and this difficulty was at length overcome we hired four horses and ten men to support the carriage and departed from les russes at six in the evening when the sun had already far descended and the snow pelting against the windows of our carriage assisted the coming darkness to deprive us of the view of the lake of geneva and the far distant alps the prospect around however was sufficiently sublime to command our attention never was seen more awfully desolate the trees in these regions are incredibly large and stand in scattered clumps over the white wilderness the vast expanse of snow was checkered only by these gigantic pines and the poles that marked our road no river or rock encircled lawn relieved the eye by adding the picturesque to the sublime the natural silence of that uninhabited desert contrasted strangely with the voices of the men who conducted us who with animated tones and gestures called to one another in a patois composed of french and italian creating disturbance where but for them there was none to what a different scene are we now arrived to the warm sunshine and to the humming of sun-loving insects from the windows of our hotel we see the lovely lake blue as the heavens which it reflects and sparkling with golden beams the opposite shore is sloping and covered with vines which however do not so early in the season add to the beauty of the prospect gentlemen's seats are scattered over these banks behind which rise the various ridges of black mountains and towering far above in the midst of its snowy alps the majestic mont blanc highest and queen of all such is the view reflected by the lake it is a bright summer scene without any of that sacred solitude and deep seclusion that delighted us at lucerne we have not yet found out any very agreeable walks but you know our attachment to water excursions we have hired a boat and every evening at about six o'clock we sail on the lake which is delightful whether we glide over a glassy surface or are speeded along by a strong wind the waves of this lake never afflict me with that sickness that deprives me of all enjoyment in a sea voyage on the contrary the tossing of our boat raises my spirits and inspires me with unusual hilarity twilight here is of short duration but we at present enjoy the benefit of an increasing moon and seldom return until ten o'clock when as we approach the shore we are saluted by the delightful scent of flowers and new-mown grass and the chirp of the grasshoppers and the song of the evening birds we do not enter into society here yet our time passes swiftly and delightfully we read latin and italian during the heats of noon and when the sun declines we walk in the garden of the hotel looking at the rabbits relieving fallen cockchaffers and watching the motions of a myriad of lizards who inhabit a southern wall of the garden you know that we have just escaped from the gloom of winter and of london and coming to this delightful spot during this divine weather i feel as happy as a new-fledged bird and hardly care what twig i fly to so that i may try my new-found wings a more experienced bird may be more difficult in its choice of a bower but in my present temper of mind the budding flowers the fresh grass of spring and the happy creatures about me that live and enjoy these pleasures are quite enough to afford me exquisite delight even though clouds should shut out mont blanc from my sight adieu m End of section seven